in high definition. This is 41 NBC News at 11. Good evening and thanks for joining us for 41 NBC News at 11. I'm Ariel Schiller. Tucker Sargent has the night off. Our top story tonight at 11, a Georgia woman is in jail after a chase on I-75 comes to an end in Perry. Deputies arrested the passenger, 31-year-old Dayton Ice Blackman of Fairburn. But the search is still on for the driver, 31-year-old Martre Williams. He's wanted in Clayton County. Just before 6 o'clock Thursday evening, Turner County deputies tried to pull over Williams. He exited the car and ran into a wooded area in Perry during a search in the Elko Road area. Officers only found a gun in his clothes. They arrested Blackman when she returned to the area looking for him. New tonight at, six, or at 11, I should say, the Bibb County Sheriff's Office is looking for a man they say robbed the family dollar on Pio Nono Avenue. They say he entered the store at around 3.30 this afternoon with a gun and demanded money. After getting cash from the registers, he ran. Call Crime Stoppers at 1-877-68-CRIME if you can help investigators with this case. In Monroe County now, a woman faces aggravated assault charges accused of shooting at her parents multiple times. Deputies arrested Kalela Spivy after responding to a domestic dispute on Clotford Road just after 11 o'clock Thursday morning. Investigators say she shot at her parents and then left the scene. Deputies pulled her over near the intersection of Highway 41 and Highway 18. Forsyth Police makes an arrest in connection to an armed robbery at Robbins Financial Credit Union in Monroe County. They arrested Douglas Hambrick around, at around 4 o'clock Thursday evening. Witnesses say a man walked into the credit union asking, asking for money and he poured gas everywhere. Hambrick is at Atrium Health Navicent in Macon for a pre-existing health condition. Police say he will be examined and sent to jail. Monroe County deputies also arrest five people on drug charges after a search warrant for numerous complaints. There are Lee Wasden, Brandy Ford, Brandon Baxter, Vivian Farguson, and Aaron Jones. Deputies say they found meth, marijuana, and a small indoor marijuana grow. They also found several drug-related objects like digital scales, packaging, and smoking devices. There are several religious holidays happening this weekend, including Passover. The eight-day holiday officially started tonight, and Temple Beth Israel hosted their first in-person community Seder since the pandemic began to mark the occasion. I attended the Seder to see why the tradition is so special. It's been a while since Temple Beth Israel was filled with this many people for Passover. But now that things are returning back to normal, Rabbi Elizabeth Bahar says they decided it was time to bring back their community Seder, which is a meal to remember and celebrate the holiday. We are at yet another inflection point within the pandemic, one where we were forced to be separated and now we can finally come together. So we're free to celebrate that coming together and able to really interact and be present with and for each other. Amy Flowers attends Temple Beth Israel. She loves Passover and celebrating it with the congregation. But because of the pandemic, she didn't get to have a Seder last year. So being back in person is exciting for her. I'm um, married to a non-Jew and so I don't really want to, I, I don't do this at home because it's a lot of food for one person. So, I, and this, the Seder is my favorite holiday and it should be in a communal thing. The Seder involves reenacting the story of Passover to remember the exodus of the Jewish people being freed from slavery in Egypt. They eat symbolic foods like matzah and bitter herbs. Rabbi Bahar says over the years Seder plates have expanded to include oranges to honor the LGBTQ plus community and a cup filled with water to honor women. This year they've added olives for peace and borscht for people in Ukraine. So we eat matzah um, bitter herbs and other yummy food to remind us of our affliction. Even though the community Seder was just for the congregation this year, Flowers encourages people to come to the synagogue throughout the year to learn more about Judaism. I come on a Friday night. We are very open and welcoming and most of the, the service is in English and if it's not we have the translation and we show people all around and, and talk about the ritual um, things and you know give them an education and invite them for the reception. 
Rabbi Bahar says they're hoping to open the community Seder to people outside of their congregation next year. Happening tomorrow, Victory Church of Macon is hosting its first ever crosswalk. Church members will take turns carrying the cross through the neighborhood nearby. The two mile walk commemorates the crucifixion of Jesus. Once the walk is finished, there will be an Easter egg extravaganza event with food and games. We spoke with church members about the true meaning of Easter weekend. We want people to experience um, the crucifixion and to just reflect and remember um, what Jesus did for us on Calvary. So we really want to connect that piece to Easter. Um, and then once that is over, we want people to feel the love and the fellowship of community. Tomorrow's event is from 11 a.m. until noon at Victory Church of Macon on Log Cabin Drive. And Beulah Land Church in Macon passed out food to the community this morning. The church partnered with the Middle Georgia Community Food Bank to give away non-perishable items and fresh meats. Beulah Land began passing out food at 6 this morning. Senior Pastor Carlos Kelly said he saw people lining up as early as 5.30. The reality is that's what the church is here for. I mean, questions have been asked if your church moves out of the area, will they even know you were gone? And I believe our church would say yes, they would miss us because we met so many needs and people look to us to be able uh, to, to have the bare necessities. And Beulah Land isn't done serving the community just yet. Tomorrow, the church is hosting a Spring Fest Carnival with food, games, and rides. That's from noon until 5.30 p.m. Admission is free. And there are several Easter events and giveaways happening this weekend in Middle Georgia. The Chapel Hill Church of Christ is giving away free food bags tomorrow from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. You can find more details on the church's Facebook page. Community Church of God is also hosting an Easter giveaway. It's tomorrow from 10 until noon. There will be household goods, furniture, toys, and clothes. Plus, you can learn more about, about utility and rental assistance. And families are invited to the Mighty Rock's 38th Annual Easter Egg Hunt and Family Fun Fest. That's happening tomorrow morning at 11 in Carolyn Creighton Park in Macon. There will be live music and food. And don't forget the city of Perry is hosting a special needs egg hunt tomorrow. It's at Rosier Park and registration begins at 10 a.m. This is a free event and all ages are welcome and siblings are also invited to participate. There will also be photo opportunities, sensory friendly games and family support services along with um, the Easter egg hunt, of course. And on Easter Sunday, Outlaw's Easter egg hunt is happening in North Macon at 1230. There will be bouncy houses for the kids and the Easter Bunny will be there. That's at 5558 Rivoli Drive. And United Community Church in Macon will host its annual Passion Play titled He Touched Me. It presents the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, showcasing Jesus' last days on earth. There are two performances Sunday and next Sunday. Doors open at 5 o'clock. The show starts at 6.30 and admission is free. And still ahead on 41 NBC News at 11, as we get closer to summer, Macon Bid County is looking to hire lifeguards for rec center pools. Details on what it takes to become a lifeguard coming up next. And Macon is getting national attention for its springtime beauty. We hit the streets to see what makes Macon pop. And have you ever wondered how Monster Jam drivers prepare mentally and physically to conduct stunts at events? We share, we'll have Shaz Karani take a dive into the mindset of monster truck drivers later in sports. Get news anytime on 41NBC.com. In high definition, this is 41NBC News at 11. Welcome back. Pool season is near and the Make and Bid Parks and Recreation Department is preparing by trying to fill lifeguard positions as soon as possible. The department has opened up its lifeguard application process and is looking to hire 33 people. You must go through training and attend courses with the Red Cross. The department says it is opening the application early to ensure pools are fully staffed this year. If we have a full staff of lifeguards, those lifeguards are at that pool every day and they uh, develop, develop a relationship with the community. Uh, alternating can be a bit difficult at times um, because everybody wants the pool in their community open. Um, that's what we would like to do. Uh, hopefully we can do that this year. 
And if you remember, last year several pools were closed because there were not enough lifeguards. If you would like to apply, just look for this story tonight on 41NBC.com. Also in Macon, the city is getting some national attention for being so beautiful in the spring. A study done by Baggage.com said that TikTok ranked Macon the third best place in the U.S. to visit in the spring. Macon gathered 53.7 million views on the social media platform. Amerson River Park was featured in the article citing its 180 acres of forest and meadows. Stephen Fulbright with Visit Macon says he's not shocked by Macon's spot on the list. Got a really hip, cool downtown. Uh, we're visually stunning community because of our architecture, because of our arts and culture. So while it's amazing and I think it's really interesting, I need to get more on TikTok um, so I can see that, but I'm not surprised at all. And of course, during the spring, Macon hosts the International Cherry Blossom Festival, and there are more springtime festivals to enjoy, like the Pan African Festival hosted by the Tubman Museum and the Just Tap Beer Festival both happen later this month. Now it's time to get a look at our weather. Here's 41 NBC AccuWeather Chief Meteorologist Cecilia Reeves. Cecilia, I know it was pretty cold this morning, but it actually warmed up and was pretty nice towards the end of the day. Yeah, we saw some 80s today. We're going to see 80s through the weekend, but we're also talking about a chance for showers and storms returning. This is looking at right now on our 41 Sky View from Piedmont Macon Medical Center as we're looking downtown Macon this evening where all is calm right now. But by tomorrow morning, some of us could be waking up to a little bit of thunder out there. Got details on that coming up next. The best stories come from you. If you see breaking news or have a news tip, Call the 41NBC Newsroom at 1-866-901-NEWS 